So far we've found AMG badges, Mercedes badges, Citroen and Peugeot badges. And I've also managed to fix stuff using Volvo parts. And that is all on an Aston Martin. Now this once was the cheapest 2019 Aston Martin Vantage in the UK. And actually, I can confirm that it still is. If we look at the Aston Martin Blackboard of Truth, we have only spent £307.99 repairing this thing so far. But that was until today. Now we did make some progress in the last video. One progress being that all four wheels now point in a straight line. This is thanks to a brand new second hand tie rod that we managed to find off an Aston Martin which was being broken for parts. But the issue we had and still have is the dashboard. This is the current state of the interior for the Aston Martin and this is all because we need to replace the dashboard because the passenger side airbag has blown. Now for someone who's not a mechanic, I've managed to wing it with previous dashboards before but it seems with the Aston Martin one, you're gonna have to have a bit of skill. Now, as I've mentioned, I don't have a new dashboard to go into the Aston Martin. What I was gonna do is replace the passenger side airbag, get this part repaired, and then re-levered over the top of it. But to do that, I need to remove the dash. And this is just not coming out despite the many bolts and electrical connectors that I've undone. And according to Aston Martin, we have to remove this full aluminum frame. And they use a dashboard crane to actually pull this thing out. So this is definitely not gonna be an easy job. As you can see here, here's the special crane that they use at Aston Martin to fit the full dashboard in place. And quite obviously, I don't have one of those in my workshop. So it looks like it's just me versus the dashboard. But I'm hoping we can work our way around that later on in the video. But for now, I wanna sort of crack on with the exterior side of things. Now there's still a lot of damaged parts on the front of the Aston Martin that we need to remove before we can start rebuilding the front end of it. Now the Aston has sort of two arch linings. There's an inner carpet lining and then this outer fiberglass lining which actually holds the headlights as well. Now we managed to buy all of this as the old ones are damaged from Synetic with a sort of package deal. But what I'm trying to get to now is not the arch lining. It's actually the bonnet hinge you can see here. In my past experience, I've noticed when a car gets damaged to the bonnet, it sometimes bends the bonnet hinges. And when you fit a new bonnet, it's almost impossible to line up. So I'm not gonna risk it with the Aston and I've actually bought some new bonnet hinges to go along with the new bonnet that we'll need as well. But to access the bonnet hinges, you need to undo this little wing on the side here. But now you can see I can access the bonnet hinge, which also has a lower hydraulic strut on as well, which was quite interesting. And that lower strut is for actually holding the door up when it's open. Now it's onto the passenger side, which seems to be the worst side here. We've got broken brackets on the front, along with broken radiators, arch lining, and who knows what else. And here you can see that passenger side wing, which is just broken off on the top right hand corner. And when I first got the car, I didn't realize that this wing was two separate pieces. So that saves me replacing this whole wing because it's just a separate part. Now maybe from watching my videos, you've got the itch to go out and buy a crash damaged car. Or maybe it's completely put you off buying a crash damaged car. But there is one thing that you should be doing before you buy any car. You should be checking them out using Car Vertical, who have sponsored today's video. Now Car Vertical works in over 20 different countries and it can help you make the right decision when buying your next car. Now what you're about to see is an E46 M3 which has appeared in auction twice and let me show you why. So after popping in your registration or VIN number into Car Vertical, you can see a screen which looks like this. This is a check on that M3 I was talking about. At the top I can see there's a green light for no mileage fraud, there's a green light that it's not been recorded as stolen and but there's an amber light for an accident and there's also a green light for no outstanding finance. As I scroll through the report I can see all the MOT tests that it's had and then right at the end 
and surprise, surprise, this vehicle was exported. Now, as I scroll through the report, I can see that all the mileage lines up, which is fine. And right here, we can see the photos in April when the car was put at the car crash auction website, and it has a massive rear end damage. This was in 2017. But then even further down the report, what's even more interesting, in August 2017, there's more pictures of it at an auction site with no damage, so it's been repaired. And just to show you what a good report looks like, here's the report on my E46 M3. All green lights at the top, I can see all the mileage all lines up, and there's no reports of it being damaged. So to check your car, or a car that you're potentially about to buy with Car Vertical, you can do by clicking the link in the description box below, and with my link, you're gonna save yourself a nice bit of cash as well. Now before we get onto the cosmetic side of things, we've still got a lot of mechanical side of things to cover and right here is pretty much the full front end that we managed to grab from Synetic in the last video. Now you can see the sort of Aston Martin is built in sections and part of the section is missing and if you remember from the first video where we picked up the car, the whole front end with the crash cans were all bent all over to one side. Now this is what I mean by a crash can. So this sits on front of the chassis right there and this is supposed to be like a crumple zone for when you're involved in an accident. Now as this crash can is actually part of the structure of the car and it's sort of like a safety feature, Aston Martin won't sell it directly to the public. They will only sell this crash can or crash cans to an Aston Martin registered repair center. So I've actually been really lucky to be able to grab the crash can here and a crash can there off a Aston Martin which had been broken for parts because really they're gonna be like gold dust. And it is really quite interesting to see how this all bolts together. It is really all in sections. You've got the front section from the crash cans forward. You've then got this section here which holds all the suspension and then that bolts to this section right here which is the whole chassis I assume. And the complexity of it doesn't stop there there is loads of radiators and cooling which go on this Aston Martin but let me explain that whilst I'm putting it together let's do this so the only radiator or cooler that sort of stayed intact in the accident was this oil cooler just in front of the driver's side wheel. So that's the one thing I'm going to be keeping when swapping over the rest of this front end. Now attached to this front end that we're bolting on now is another radiator in front of the passenger side wheel well. Now yes there are companies out there that can recall radiators. So you can basically take your radiator to the repair shop and they'll recall the center of it. But unfortunately but not surprisingly they couldn't do the Aston Martin ones. But lucky enough for me, I've managed to get hold of a full radiator pack, so it's not that much of an issue. So I'm now bolting up the old oil cooler onto the new front end, and there's a lot of other bolts to do up which mount the front end to the rest of the car as well. And with that front part fitted with the crash cans, we can now begin to fit the rest of the radiators. You've got one big main radiator here, which is for the engine coolant to cool the actual engine down. This radiator has the same fittings as a C63, being that it is a C63 engine, so there's no surprise there. And then in front of that radiator goes the aircon condenser. And just in between the main radiator and the aircon condenser is another radiator. I believe that radiator is a separate cooling system used for the charge coolers and the two turbos on this engine. And to top that off, there's another smaller radiator which sits on top of that, which is I think a secondary one for the engine. And not forgetting the one in front of the passenger side wheel, which I believe is for the gearbox to cool that down. Okay, we're making progress now. I've added about half a metre onto the front of the car now and it looks, it just looks so weird and so long, but I guess this is all for sort of like weight distribution. The engine is behind the front wheel, so it's sort of like a front mid engine car and then we've got a lot of weight here on the front, but I guess it's all just to balance it all out. But now we have the radiator pack on and we've got all the bonnet latches as well. Now to put coolant in, as you can imagine, with it being an Aston Martin, it's not just the case of topping it up and letting it run itself. So as I probably mentioned, this expansion tank holds the coolant for the engine coolant and all these lines go through here, round into this radiator right there and then through the engine to keep it nice and cool. Now if we're gonna top coolant up in that, we can't just pop it in, it needs to be vacuum filled and I'll explain why we're not doing that just yet. And then we have this expansion tank right here which is a separate cooling system for the two turbos here which have got charge coolers there, there and also the gearbox which is 
is located at the back of the car, so you can imagine the long coolant lines which run underneath the car. This also cools the gearbox down as well. So even though that's just a small expansion tank, I can still imagine it taking a lot of coolant because there's going to be lines running from the front all the way to the back. And again, this is going to have to be vacuum filled to prevent any airlocks. And I'll explain what I mean by that as I mentioned later. Next up, we're onto the bonnet hinges. There's three 10mm bolts holding this onto the frame of the car and then the hydraulic struts as well. It's a pretty simple job when you can access it. And once you've got that off, on goes the new ones, which look exactly the same as the old ones. But you never know whether they've got the tiniest little bend in, which could really affect the way the bonnet sits. Now we're going on with the arch linings. A lot of you ask, how do I know where everything goes back together? And how do I know what bolts go where? Well, these little postage bags, which are labelled up by myself, seem to help. Although my handwriting isn't the best of things. But I can understand it, so I guess that's all that matters. Finally, we're on with the two air boxes and then the cold air intake on the front. Now everything is all back on mechanically now. Air boxes are on, radiators are on, and it's time now for all the sort of cosmetic and the body parts. Now everything that I bought up to this point has been from Synetic. And the total of those parts being 2,210 pounds. So, so far, I don't think we're actually doing so bad. I think around two and a half thousand pounds to get to this stage, although it does still look a mess, but that is until this point right now. So what you're seeing right here is eight and a half thousand pounds worth of front end. Now that may sound expensive, but really when you break all these parts down, it's not actually too bad. And me being me, where there's a chance to upgrade, I've upgraded. So just an example, this badge alone, which sits along the front bumper, is 360 pounds if you bought it separately. I bought this full thing as a sort of package deal. And well, you guys let me know whether I got a good deal or not. Let me show you. So all of this stuff here has came from an Aston Martin race team. And when you've got race team stuff, that means you've got carbon fiber stuff. And I just couldn't help myself but grab extra little bits and bobs to upgrade the Aston Martin whilst I was there. For example, this is a big carbon fiber sort of bonnet vent, which is cut out here, which was on a race car. Obviously this thing is not painted because race teams tend to sort of wrap the cars instead of paint it. I don't know, is it lighter? I'm not too sure. We've managed to get a front bumper as well, which is unpainted. The front splitter and loads more carbon fiber bits like this, which is actually that part on the front wing, which we need to replace. And well, now we've got a carbon fiber front wing. Not only that, there's even more stuff in here. Along with all the carbon fiber stuff, I managed to find some carbon fiber wing mirrors, which was kicking around the workshop as well. I asked if I could nick that, they said yes. We've also got a full wiring loom for the front, including all the parking sensors and the camera. We've got a carbon fiber rear diffuser to match all the rest of the carbon fiber stuff. And then in here are headlights, but we'll get onto them. So although this stuff does seem expensive, when you add it up all together, I think it does come a lot higher than eight and a half at a thousand pounds but there was one thing that I went a little over the top with. Now they had all of this carbon stuff, but the one thing that they didn't have carbon was this front splitter here, which just was a regular gloss black. And that is such a sort of iconic piece on the Aston Martin. It's like a, such a standout thing on the front end. And I thought, well, if we've got all the carbon fiber bits, I need a carbon fiber front splitter. But that's where I managed to find this thing here, a carbon fiber front splitter and full grill surround. And this 
was from astonmartinbits.com or .co.uk. This was really expensive and I didn't want to buy it, but I felt I had to. And this was £1,200. So with me going on a mass shopping spree and buying carbon parts that I didn't need, it brought the total cost so far to £12,217 and 99p. But I just can't help myself upgrading parts where they need to be upgraded. <laughs> need. They don't really need to be upgraded, really. Well, yeah, yes, yes, they, yes, they do. They do need to be upgraded. But right now, I'm just assembling the front bumper, which includes the front grille and the parking sensors, and of course, that carbon fiber front splitter. And I'm pretty sure Aston Martin used a nicer assembly bench than what I did. With that all assembled, I can line it up to the car and just sort of loosely bolt it on. We're not going for anything exact at the moment. And what a difference a front bumper can make. Next up, we're onto the bonnet with those huge vents in them. The vents have like a carbon skin which sits underneath them. Then I've just got to transfer all the locks and the cables and the heat covers of the old bonnet onto the new one. Oh my god, look at that, what a transformation already. The car is looking kind of complete, well, more complete. This bonnet is basically the whole front of the car and it sort of just dominates the front end with this front bumper as well and then that carbon splitter. I just think this carbon here and then also matching with the carbon sort of bonnet vents looks so good, but I just don't think they're gonna pop nicely with the black. So perhaps a full color change for the Aston, I don't know. Now, it's looking so much better already, but there are a few things that will need touching up here and there. So right now, the panel fitment isn't quite Aston Martin spec. Maybe more Range Rover spec. The difference between the bonnet and the bumper is quite big. I definitely don't think you should be able to fit a finger between that gap, but there is adjustments for the bumper underneath here, which allows you to sort of raise that gap up and tighten it all up. But that's something we could do later on. Definitely at the back here, it's not quite right. There's a lip between the bonnet and also the door, which can get that sort of inch perfect as well and that is why I've left this sort of wing panel off here because I can still access the bonnet hinge here so I can undo the bolts of the bonnet hinge lift that up and get it perfect but not quite at that stage of sort of perfecting all the lines in it just yet but I cannot resist showing you guys how good these little carbon wing inserts look they look so sick dun, 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 dun. The easiest wing I've ever fitted. And when this is down. Look at that. That is like the V12 Vantage. That has that sort of carbon insert there. That is going to look amazing when we've got the carbon mirrors on as well. It's a carbon overload, but definitely I think the black contrasting against the carbon doesn't work as well as maybe a brighter colour. Okay, here we go. This is always a big moment for the channel. Headlights. Now these are pretty much brand new headlights and they were included in the £8,500 price that I got all the sort of race parts from the race team from. And second hand headlights are selling for around £1,500 each. Now I'm pretty sure that Aston Martin race cars don't actually use the stock headlights, hence why they've got brand new ones laying around. They use like a, a thing which is kind of almost built into the bumper. I'll try and put a picture on the screen now. Now on every car, we always do seem to have problems with the headlights and these were the ones that came off and they're pretty smashed up and damaged and I actually wasn't going to buy these new ones here and I'll explain why. Now we've learned before in the past that if the part number on the headlight, this one ended in BD and the one that came off the car 
ends in AD normally means there's going to be some difference in the headlights. On some cars, they might have spec corner assist lights or sometimes high beam assist, and some headlights have them, some headlights don't. But on this Aston Martin, I just couldn't figure it out. And the other thing that I think is probably going to be the main issue, the headlights that this car came off was left hand drive. And of course, we have a right hand drive car, which means the beam pattern is probably completely different. But maybe, just maybe, with the computer, we might be able to switch it back over to right hand drive. I don't know. But with all that in mind, I just couldn't say no with the headlights being included in the prize with the rest of that front end. But I'm hoping, worst case, we may be able to make a good set of headlights out of four headlights that we have. With the headlights in now, it is looking so good. But it's became a lot more evident that, well, the bumper does need to go up, well, at least a few centimeters because you can see a gap here. There's still a bolt to go in underneath the headlight, but again, we just want to test that they're working first before we start all like moving around the panels and everything. And you can see here, there's quite a big gap between the bonnet and the actual headlight. I, I assume that that's supposed to sit nice and flush and not look like that. But the black inserts in the headlights match so nice nicely against this sort of like carbon shark grill almost well the most stupid award goes to me i was just getting really excited to see if these headlights were going to work and then i realized well the inside of the car looks like that and the battery is disconnected because all the wires are disconnected so i can't even tell whether those headlights are going to work or not so it looks like we won't actually know whether those headlights work or not until we've got the dash out and then back in again the suspense is gonna kill me on this one. So really, ignoring all the panel lining up and everything like that, the next job is actually to get this dashboard out so we can tackle that passenger side airbag. Which weirdly brings me on to the reason why I haven't filled the coolant up yet. Now, once again, thanks to DTV Motorsport, we've had an ex Aston Martin technician come down and sort of show me the ropes on how this dash actually comes out as he used to assemble them. And the good news is I'm not actually that far off, but the bad news is I've dismantled a lot of things that I didn't need to dismantle. But Aston Martin are correct. That full aluminium frame does need to be lifted out. There's no other shortcut around it. The whole thing, 50 kg of it, does need to come out of that car. And the reason I haven't topped up the coolant yet, because the heater matrix pipes, which go from inside the engine bay to the dashboard, if I'm right, run on coolant. And that's the reason why you get hot and cold coming out the fans inside the cabin. Now, they need to be disconnected to allow the dashboard to be removed for some absolute crazy reason. And also, the steering column needs to be removed so if i were to disconnect those two heater matrix pipes cooling would go everywhere i'd need to top it up again and that would cause airlocks and everything like that so we're gonna tackle that at a later date and when i say later date i mean in the next video so if you've enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button and i will see you in the next video where hopefully this dashboard will be coming out peace out you don't see shop? Sure. 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 Sure.